I'm going deaf over here. Jesus Christ. Welcome to the pass on WSIC. I can tell that Nikki is not behind the boards today. We have Nick Moncher doing our production for us today, so hopefully he'll jump on in a little bit and uh, talk to us as well. Welcome to the Inside Pass here on WSIC. I'm Randy Miller. Tom is sitting six feet away. We're practicing social distancing in our studios today. So he'll, <laughs> he's sitting over there, and uh, Nick will flip the camera over to him in just a second. Uh, he, he's, he's, learn- he's training and learning today. Uh, so i uh, got a big show for you today. We're going to continue to talk, of course, the, the top story in all of the world right now is the coronavirus situation. There's a lot of news uh, coming down the pipeline, not only from the IndyCar side, but from the NASCAR side as well. And every time NASCAR decides on doing something, somebody throws a monkey wrench into their plans. Um, so we'll talk about that as well. Uh, we hope to be joined by Nate DeGroote from Motorsport.com. There's a big staff meeting this morning at the Motorsport.com facility. Don't know what that's all about, but uh, I wish him good luck because it doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's good news. But, I mean, in the world we're in right now, Tom, you know. Yeah, you do what you got to do. I mean. Well, it's um, it's a tough situation for everybody mm-hmm. right now, for sure. Yep. I mean, that's something that uh, you know we hope that um, you know it's a staff meeting to talk about uh, upcoming stories and right. storylines and all of that and content rather than something a little bit uh, less desirable like cuts and pay. Yeah, so yeah, um, for sure, you know, it's um, it's just a real tough time for everybody in the country and throughout the world and. Um, just have to do our best to get through it. Yep, so uh, hopefully he'll be able to join us at some point in time in the hour to kind of t- t- talk about you know what, what he's seeing. He he is uh, up in upstate New York, which is one of the hotbeds for the coronavirus in general. The whole state of New yeah. York is so um, he's he's staying safe and, and being safe. He's he's up in the Syracuse area somewhere. So um, he's kind of a, kind of away from the the main area, the New York City area. Um, but it's bad everywhere up in the upstate New York. So he's uh, he's trying to just kind of hold himself down, and, and so hopefully he'll get to join us a little bit later on. So um, for those of you who, who don't know, um, of course, the, the state of North Carolina in and of itself is under a stay-at-home order and effective uh, yesterday until yes. uh, April 30th, um, which means not a lot for the normal average person. I mean, you can still go to the grocery store. You can still do the normal things that you would normally do as far as running errands go. The NASCAR side of this is, is that now the NASCAR shops are completely shut down. So nobody is, is in or out of the building, which means right. the cars are being worked on, nothing's being done um, in terms of that. So they won't be able to go back into the building until at least April 30th, um, which means that hopefully you know, they've, they've taken the last few weeks to prepare cars for the future because you know if – and only if uh, NASCAR gets to come back in May, it would be roughly a 11 to 15 day turnaround, um, which I don't know if that's enough time. But hopefully, these guys have, have been able to to go in the shop and do some work, knowing that you know this was probably going to be on everybody's mind going forward. Well, here's the situation too: is you've got the state of Virginia now, yes. where the governor has decided that um, that state is going to be on lockdown until June the 10th. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he sees something that nobody sees at this point, which is that we need to go two and a half months out, um, and uh, which the net effect of that right now is that it throws into jeopardy the expected return to racing of May 9th at Martinsville Speedway that we were all kind of pointing to if this April 30th date holds true and we can all start kind of working our way back to normal in the beginning of May, right. Martinsville was scheduled to be that return race mm-hmm. and the NASCAR wheel and modified tour, which already had to postpone their South Boston show um, from back a couple of weeks uh, was expected to come out of the box at Martinsville and would be actually the first race and then the cup race right, the next night. Right. Um, now that weekend's in jeopardy. So now what we're looking at is the possibility that NASCAR may have to reschedule Martinsville, um, which would put us into Charlotte week at, at the earliest before we could. Um, now, on the one hand, you say, well, you know, even if even if we had been able to the teams get back to work on May the 1st, could they have run Martinsville eight days later? We don't know. 
but that was at least what the working plan was. Mm -hmm. And now that's going to go away because is likely anyway. We again, we haven't had an official announcement, but you know, just again, looking at if June 10th holds and Virginia's unlocked until June the 10th, obviously you can't run a race at Martinsville on May the 9th. Correct. So, you know, reasonably we could be looking at Charlotte at the earliest. And for those of you who are modified fans, that would put you uh, in early June. Um, and I can't remember where the uh, the race is. I think it's maybe Stafford, but it's one of the New England shows mm-hmm. um, in early June as your opening date. So, um, you know, again, this is a very fluid situation, a lot of confusion. Not everybody agrees with everybody uh, on what we're doing here. Um, you know, the governors are kind of doing their own thing. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, theories, a lot of things that fans probably would like to see in terms of, you know, where we go from here, especially if Martinsville is another race. There's too many things, you know, going forward. Because if you think, okay, now if we don't come back until, you know, the beginning of June, you basically have two and a half, maybe three months yeah. of actual competition before you get into the chase scenario. So then, you know, you basically have to fit eight races into three months of time, um, which is doable at some tracks, but then some tracks it's, you know, it's difficult. We talked about um, Homestead and – um uh What's the other track that only has one date? Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta, yeah. Yeah. Um, Homestead and Atlanta being the, the only two tracks right now that only have one date. So fitting those guys in may be a little bit more complicated than fitting tracks that have two dates. But most of the tracks that we're skipping right now, their next date is in the chase. So it'd be hard to figure out how to, you know, obviously that would throw out the, doing double headers and things like that because you'd already be into the chase by that time. So, into the playoffs. Um, yeah. yeah, into the playoffs. So. I mean, I, I, at this point, it almost feels like NASCAR should just completely rehaul the whole schedule for the rest of the year to fit those races in, you know, taking tracks out of the out of the playoffs and putting them into the summer so they could run the doubleheaders and, you know, doing Which different things like that to, to you know, make it all uh, Far fit, easier so. said than done. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's not a matter of just plucking things out and putting them in different places. But, I mean, at this point, you know, what can you do? We'll, we'll talk more about conspiracy theories and, you know, things that, that, that the fans want to see. Um, when we come back from break, hopefully Nick will be joining us as well. And the IndyCar side of things has, has made some announcements that's going to throw curveballs into everything as well. So we'll talk about that too when we come back. More racing news when we come back on the Inside Pass on WSIC with Tom Randy and uh, our producer Nick. We'll be right back. When you get in your car this afternoon, tune to News Talk 105.9 Lake Norman, 100.7 Greater Statesville, and get the latest breaking news and weather for your commute. Financial stuff, it's so confusing. Where do you even start? With a trusted partner who knows the options and can understand your individual needs. That partner is Joshua Doby from the North Main Financial Group in Cornelius and host of North Main Financial, Saturdays at noon on WSIC. Hello, this is Joshua Doby, and I'm excited to share financial education while securing your financial future. Whether it's stocks, bonds, life insurance, partnerships, or anything else, we're here to help. Join me Saturdays at noon and visit us at NorthMainFinancial.com. For WSIC, I'm Fox 46 meteorologist Nick Coaster. Staying cloudy this evening with a chance for showers, and we'll see a cool overnight low of 37 tomorrow, up to 60 with partly sunny skies, and a touch milder for Thursday, a high of 62 under mostly sunny skies. From the Neighborhood Stormwatch Forecast Center, I'm meteorologist Nick Coaster. Be sure to catch Chief Meteorologist Tara Lane today on Fox 46 News at 5. Happening now at Randy, Mary, and Ford Lincoln in Statesville. Statesville, Iredell County, it is finally here. Ford and Lincoln has moved. We are in our brand new facility right on I-77, right across the interstate from our old facility. But I tell you what, state of the art, it is absolutely fabulous. Come in today, just take a tour. I know a lot of folks have been watching it being built over the months, and we're excited to be here, and we're excited to show you. So come see us today. King of Price, Randy, Mary, and Ford Lincoln in Statesville. Message and data rates may apply. If you're considering going back to school, ask yourself the following questions. Do you need the flexibility to take classes on your schedule? Do you have college credits you need transferred? Do you want to earn a quality degree from a world-renowned university? If you answered yes to any of these questions, Arizona State University is the perfect school for you. Arizona State University offers over 200 highly ranked degree programs 100% online. You'll learn the same degree as you would on campus from wherever you are on your schedule. 
plus ASU Online accepts most transfer credits. For information, text THINK to 35517. Learn for yourself why the Wall Street Journal ranks ASU fifth in the nation for producing the best qualified graduates and why 88% of ASU grads are recruited within 90 days of graduation. Learn to grow, learn to succeed, and learn to thrive at Arizona State University. To learn more about ASU Online degrees, text THINK to 35517. That's T-H-I-N-K to 35517. Join John and Jeff on Those Weekend Golf Guys show for golf tips, equipment, and how to improve your game. Sunday afternoon at 4, here on News Talk 105.9, 100.7, WSIC. I'm Chase Elliott, and you're listening to the Inside Pass. Welcome back to the Inside Pass here on WSIC. Randy Miller, Tom Baker sitting six feet away on our social distancing uh, guidelines because we're on TV, so we have to be nice and, you know, do our part because we'll get called out on it if we don't. Somebody yeah. else somewhere will be like, you're not sitting six feet away. I'm over in the Seelman seat. Yes, yes, so it's, it's Dean in the Seelman seat. Uh, Nick Montra is doing the production for us uh, today, and the key is in the, in the room, but she's uh, being incognito, making sure that Nick is... Uh, not For letting those of train you who don't know Nick, Nick is the PR guru of Venturini Motorsports. He's become a production guru and for us, now, too. Yes, he is now part of our production team and part of our Race Chaser WSIC family. And uh, we're happy to have him in this morning. Nikia yeah. is... I'm just happy Nikia's here to help. Yeah, <laughs> Nick's got his rookie stripe on Definitely for this show. For the night, for this today. is a well, completely different show to produce than our nighttime he came he came walking show. down the hallway this morning looking like vince mcmahon like he knew exactly what he was going to do when he walked in here and then he sat down and he's like um <laughs> not, yeah because nobody told him that this the, our show is produced differently from the mondays and thursday shows because we're on radio and tv at the same time yes. so but different buttons to have to push and he was like oh, i know what i'm waiting no i don't i'm like so. ricky bobby i don't know what to do with my hands <laughs> yeah he's he's sitting in his underwear i'm on fire i'm on fire so yeah not yeah. really no, not really. But, but we don't have a camera on him for that, you know. If there's if there's if there's anybody in this building that we would we trust as much as Nikia, it would be Nick. That's for so, sure. Yeah. So I he's go not with gonna... Nikia. Like she's got 110 percent of the trust. <laughs> 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 yeah. Anyway, so uh, welcome back. back to if you want to uh, call in and uh, talk to us, seven zero four eight seven three fourteen hundred is our hotline. Feel free to call in and. and uh, Tell us what you're, what you're doing to pass the time away waiting on NASCAR to come back. Um, if you guys watched any of the iRacing, uh, the Pro Invitational Series over the weekend, I recorded it and watched it a couple hours after it ended. And last week I said, you know, I'm not an iRacing fan, and I'm, I'm still not a fan because to me it's, it was cool and it was entertaining, but sometimes it's a little over the top. Like I get, I get the entertainment factor, but, you know, the whole crank it up. I, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it as close to the real thing as possible, but sometimes it's like, Okay, guys, come on. Obviously, this is not real. I mean, Why? it's not real, but I mean, you, you don't want to. No, I mean, you don't I want to hear elevated eye racing. I want to experience it, but at the same time, noise? sometimes it's like, okay, there's a fine line between, okay, I get it, and <laughs> oh, come on, guys. I mean, Clint Boyer to me is, uh, they should just let him do it all by himself because I, I, him by himself is, is just hysterical. But um, I don't know. I, I just, I, maybe it's just because I'm so, you know, I, I so just want NASCAR to be back that I don't, nothing is going to take its place. But And I know it's not supposed to take its place. It's supposed to be fun and entertaining, and it is. I just, you know, it's not as exciting and fun to me. But See, I, I just, I guess I look at it from an entirely different perspective. I look at it as entertainment right. with the NASCAR guys, as if I was a fly on the wall just watching a bunch of these guys get together for the fun of it, mm -hmm. and go race a sim race. Right, right. Okay, yeah, that's true. And I think it's phenomenal. And and by the way, for those who don't know, there actually is a Fox Radioactive from yes, there is. Sunday's race. There is. Now, see, if you listen to that, it changes your perspective completely because these guys, when they're doing this, they're racing. And when, you know, when... when you know, when they get bumped or whatever, it's, I mean, oh, yeah. they're in the moment. Yeah. And so, um, go to, um, those of you who want to check that out, just go to, uh, NASCAR on Fox, um, Twitter or whatever it's on there. And we're going to share it to race chaser media, uh, our social media, race chaser media a little later too. Um, it's just hilarious to listen to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I see, I think it's cool and, and I hope they extend it. And we were talking on lead lap last night about somebody had done a poll of fans on what tracks you'd like to see them add if they're going to add tracks, because now we're going to be off a little longer, mm -hmm. looks like. So um, Nashville Fairgrounds was one thought. 
Um, you know, South Boston was another thought. Um, You're missing the biggest one. Well, it, it, I mean, there were there were several, but Eldora was the one that got my interest peak. Nick, you and I were talking well, yeah, about. Just, we we did the poll of Henry Motorsports. Today. Okay, that's right. It was and, your poll. Uh, number one was I'm North sorry. Wilkesboro. Number two was Nashville Fairgrounds. Three was South Boston, and four was Eldora. But North Wilkesboro is not uh, ready yet. On no, the it's not, not done right. yet. But so you go to the next three, mm-hmm. and see what I said was we need to get Eldora added. Mm-hmm. So you go run a dirt race, right? And then you get Tony Stewart to to jump in a car and right. park him six feet away from Clint Boyer and let the two oh, of them yeah. be yeah. Um, commentators oh, on yeah. the broadcast. That would be funny. That yeah. would, would be. I, I NASCAR. I get NASCAR's trying to you know stay as close to the schedule as possible um, because you know that way it's it's kind of easier to. You know, this is what it would be like if you know sure. we, we had we had we had gone to Texas. You know, we're going to Bristol this this Sunday is the Bristol race, which is going to be a blast. Um, and I get it. What's fascinating to me and, and my takeaway because I, I didn't watch all of the the first race at Homestead, but I watched all of the one at Texas. And it's funny to me, you know, you, you hear drivers talk about you know how they spent uh, apparently Denny Hamlin spent like forty thousand dollars on his sim rig or whatever. Um, and you know, guys like Kyle Larson, you 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 see how different people have different setups, you know, in their basement in their house for for their sim racing. Then you have a guy like Timmy Hill who won with a steering wheel clipped to his desk and a desktop yes. computer in his you know bedroom or spare room or whatever, winning. You know, it doesn't that's proof? Obviously, it doesn't matter how much you spend, but it's the same thing you know in dirt racing. You know, we talk about all the time. You know, guys that, that come to the track and you know they're forty thousand dollar race cars and you know ten grand motors, and you have a guy behind him that spent you know a couple of thousand dollars on his motor and whoops him you know whoops him out on the racetrack. So it doesn't matter what your setup is. It's it's all in how you you know how much experience you have at it and how much you practice at it. Timmy Hill is a former like champion. I like an iRacing racing champion, so he's been obviously doing this for quite some time, and it shows in you know his ability to go out and win. Sure, Texas. And well, so, and also this is a great equalizer, right? Because you got a lot of these these veteran drivers who don't really spend any time on the sim, so they've right. had to catch up and learn. Kyle yep. Busch is a great example of a driver who's mm-hmm. still struggling. Clint Boyer's struggling a little bit. You know, but, and, and this is the other thing that the fans have to remember, is there's no purse, there's no points fund. Right. This is something that drivers are doing for free. And oh, by the way, we went up considerably in the viewership this weekend we went from nine hundred thousand plus last weekend for the first one um or last weekend from from uh yeah for the first one to three um 1.3 million this time and again that's only cable they're not counting anybody that's watching on a stream or whatever Mm -hmm. um that's just the cable ratings right and we know that that people have run away from cable so it would have been a whole lot higher had Fox actually did what they said they were going to do and put the race on Fox. Well, a lot of the Fox the affiliates did. The Charlotte Fox chose not to. They, Which makes no sense because Air Nascar Force One, the movie, Which was is a, a fantastic movie. It is, but it. it I Shut mean, up, Nick. We're not talking about the movie. We're in NASCAR about. country, man. This is exactly. true. What are you doing? I mean, you know, that was about as tone deaf as it gets for the local Fox affiliate in Charlotte to choose Air Force One over you know broadcasting the NASCAR deal. But you know, I guess they thought they could get one more, more than one point three million out of that. Maybe they, maybe they did. Maybe they did. <laughs> I mean, iRacing is, has grown. Also, I, I know I saw um, somebody had posted something about the iRacing, uh, iRacing website has gotten about three, three thousand, four thousand new users. Over five. Um, oh, is well, it over, over five, five now? Yeah, yeah. 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 Was, since since yeah. this since this whole thing started yep. a couple weeks ago. So obviously, whatever they're doing. You know, I hope at the end of this, when we come out of this coronavirus, you know, this this quarantine or whatever that we're in, I hope that that we get new fans out of this. I hope that the you know the younger generation actually sees what NASCAR does and goes and catches a new ra- you know, uh, an actual race or goes and watches an uh, you know an actual race on TV to see that they're pretty comparable, you know, in terms of what you're seeing on TV. So I, I hope that at least we get a a, a newer fan base out of this, if nothing else, because that's what we need. We need a, we need the younger generation to start getting more involved in the sport. So I think what we're seeing is too is this is an opportunity to see the personalities come out. Everybody's having True. a good time. True. I mean, yeah, in the moment, if you know, if you crash me or you whatever, then yeah, I'm mad just like it would be. In a, but um, you know, we're seeing some some of the personalities come mm-hmm. out, Nick, and I, I I think you know a lot of these guys as as we do. 
And, you know, some of them have come through Venturini and other teams where you've worked. So um, it's a it's a whole different sort of perspective on watching these guys do their thing and have some fun at the same time. Well, I think they're also taking it away from, you know, the computer screen, if you will, because you see like Alex Bowman showing his dog in the rig yeah, and, yeah. and Kyle Bush, you know, showing Braxton there in his little his man little cave with yeah. all his Larson his was eating a McDonald's and, cheeseburger. Yeah. And then you have Michael Walter trying to, you know, feed Denny Hamlin Taco Bell. So I think you get, you know, kind of all the <laughs> playfulness that on and off the track that we don't necessarily get on a race mm-hmm. weekend all the time, too. So it kind of makes, you know humanizes the drivers more for the fan well it does i mean you know well the in the other day michael was in garrett smithley's house and garrett said where's my taco and michael said well the, they told me i can't eat in, eat in the pits anymore so <laughs> garrett garrett wanted a taco and could get one then he refused his last week so um but it's just like you said it's it's fun and where did they come up with we we had live dead for the uh yeah. national yeah. anthem yeah. What what uh we're um I forgot his first name is it Greg Dave uh, I can't remember but it, yeah from the Grateful Dead. Dead I'm not a big yeah. Dead fan but um I just thought that was kind of out of left field and Troy Aikman giving the command yeah. who used to own an Xfinity team I think or mm-hmm. was it a Cup team, team. was yep. it Cup, cup okay yep. um you know and, and so just fun stuff I mean it just gives. Again, if we just remember it's entertainment, it's not. Nobody's being pretentious. Nobody's pretending right. it's real. Right. Um, it's just a good time for an hour and a half once a week. And what it spawned is a whole bunch of other um, racing kind of uh, things like that. IndyCar did one. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a couple of the local speedways in New England are doing doing them now. Um you know there there've been an, a number of them and there's a there's one there's a series coming out that's debuting Thursday night um for junior late model racers yes um yeah, mobile one um, mobile sponsor. one yeah, yeah it's the, the mobile one junior late model esport series um race face brand development yeah. is is the one that that uh, put it together and that's going to be a blast. Two divisions for that. A lot of, gives a lot of the young kids an opportunity to, mm-hmm. and you know, there's some prize money involved and and all of that. So six, I think six race series. So it should be a lot of fun. I mean, I think this is a neat deal, and it's I think it's good to show that simulation. While obviously it's not real, it's a great way to learn the mental side and the visual side of what you're doing in a race car. Yep, no, none of the other sports are doing it. They're all showing replays of four or five years ago. So I mean, you know. Clearly, NASCAR is trying to do something to at least maintain its fan base and show that they're trying to produce new content. You know, where you know baseball and you know all the other sports are off right now, not doing anything yeah. at all. So, I mean, at least NASCAR is trying. All right, we are going to take another break. When we come back on the other side, we'll talk about the IndyCar side of things and then their schedule, moving things around to kind of make everything fit back into place. We'll talk about that when we come back on the Inside Pass on WSIC. Stick around. We'll be right back. This is News Talk, 105.9 Lake Norman, 100.7 Greater Statesville, WSIC, where Statesville turns first for breaking news and severe weather alerts. Covering Mooresville and the region, WSIC News is next. You've turned in to hear local news and so have a lot of other people. Your business could be advertising right here. Find out how affordable it can be. Call 704-872-6345, 704-872-6345. Hey, Radio Family, it's Margaret Beveridge from the WSIC News Desk. Seven people have been charged with violating the stay-at-home order after protesting at Greensboro Abortion Clinic. Three of the individuals were already charged for protesting outside the clinic in Greensboro on Saturday. The NCAA will permit Division I spring sport athletes, such as baseball, softball, and lacrosse players, who had their seasons shortened by the coronavirus pandemic, to have an additional year of eligibility. The NCAA Division I Council voted Monday to give spring sport athletes, regardless of their year in school, a way to get back the season they lost. But it did not guarantee financial aid to the current crop of seniors if they return to play next year. Daniel Stowe Botanical Garden, which celebrated its 20th anniversary in 2019, is closing to the general public indefinitely due to the coronavirus crisis. Officials say the garden reduced its staff of 52 down to 9 people. 
Stay tuned to WSIC throughout the day for more. I'm Margaret Beveridge from the News Desk. This health tip is brought to you by Piedmont Healthcare. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Hands touch many surfaces and can pick up viruses. Once contaminated, your hands can transfer the virus to your eyes, nose, or mouth. From there, the virus can enter your body and make you sick. Get in to Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville. It's March, and what does that mean at Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville? Truck Month. Truck Month is here, and Silverado's and Colorados are in stock, ready for immediate delivery. We've got crew cabs, regular cabs, the double cabs, four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive. You name it, Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville has it, and we've got the discounted prices behind it. Randy Marion Chevrolet in Statesville, come see us. King of Price, RandyMarionStatesville.com. Are you ready to perform at your peak when it matters the most? At Mental Edge Fitness Solutions, we can help you avoid mental blocks, improve your focus, as well as perform under pressure by using science to see what your brain is doing in real time. Contact us at Mental Edge Fitness Solutions, 919-606-2566, or visit us online at mentaledge-fitness.com if you are ready to reach your peak mental performance. I'm Pastor Chris Thompson, and I want to invite you to join me this Sunday at 10 a.m. for the River of Life broadcast on WSIC, where we open God's Word and discover how God's truth transforms our life. That's the River of Life broadcast on WSIC at 10 a.m. This is Justin Loft, and you're listening to the best guys on the radio, the Inside Pass. Welcome back to the Inside Pass here on WSIC. Thank you so much for watching us or listening to us wherever you are in the uh, greater Lake Norman, Mooresville, Charlotte area. Um, thank you for watching us on Digital Channel 25.2 or on one of the three WSIC family of radio stations, 100.7 FM, 1400 AM, or 105.9 FM. Or if you're streaming us uh, on either the TuneIn app or on uh, WSICweb.com, thank you so much for joining us there. Tom Baker, Randy Miller, back with you here on this Tuesday morning talking about uh, NASCAR, the coronavirus, and... Uh, the uh, iRacing League, the, the Pro Invitational Series that NASCAR is doing right now to kind of keep fans engaged in NASCAR while they're under this break. Um, IndyCar is uh, making announcements kind of left and right. I mean, it's it's obviously kind of come to a, a halt right now because there's a, a whole lot of things that are still having to be worked out. But um, the the traditional uh, Indy 500 weekend or the, the day Indy 500 that starts with Monaco and then IndyCar and the Coca-Cola 600, is is gone. Monaco canceled their race a couple weeks ago. Now the Indy 500 is being moved to uh, August 23rd. Still no word on the Coca-Cola 600. There's a possibility it could still be ran, only because Charlotte, the uh, North Carolina, is supposed to come out of our quarantine on uh, April 30th, but that also could change too. So as of right now, we we don't know, but. Um, there's still time to figure out what's going to happen with the All Star Race and, and the Coca Cola 600. But um, so IndyCar moves the 500 to August 23rd. The Indy Grand Prix will be run on July 4th weekend, which is the same weekend that NASCAR will be at Indy for the Brickyard. So NASCAR and IndyCar fans get their doubleheader that they've longed for, although not the kind of doubleheader that they probably wanted to put together. But at this point, there's not really much that they can do about that. Um, and what we do know is that Tony Stewart plans to run or wants to run both races. Uh, he doesn't have an IndyCar ride yet, but he will be in the Xfinity race um, on uh, Saturday. So hopefully, you know, put a car together. He doesn't. I don't think he wants to run the, the Cup race, just Xfinity and uh, the Grand Prix. Um, Jimmy Johnson has shown interest in running both uh, as well if he gets a quality ride. So. If anything, I think the entry list could be very interesting when we get to Indianapolis in, in August because there's some potential for NASCAR people to run Indy and IndyCar people maybe to run NASCAR. Who knows? Well, and we we om- I feel like we almost need that. Oh yeah, like the cross I, brand would be because awesome because it's rescheduled. And look, the Indy 500 is the Indy 500, mm-hmm. but it's not going to quite be the Indy 500 because you don't have that whole month right, It's of not a May month. It's just a week or less than a week. Build up to that. Yeah. Um, and you don't have the day off the next day. Right. <laughs> um, but it's it's um, that weekend be, because of the, the the situation now with being able to take, well, what do we do with the Grand Prix? Well, let's put it with the Brickyard Race and create this doubleheader. Now, I think, I, I feel like we need somebody to to really you got to have that big story to key on and imagine Tony Stewart and Jimmy Johnson both running both ends of that weekend mm-hmm. that would be 
pretty interesting. Whether you're running the cup race and the IndyCar race or the Xfinity race and IndyCar race, it is inconsequential to me. To run a stock car and an Indy car on the same weekend at 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 the Brickyard would be pretty impressive. And um, now there's even talk that Jimmy Johnson is saying, "Eh, not sure I'm retiring at the end of 2020." Right. So, you know this this is there's a lot of things right now in flux, and so even though we're on hiatus for a little bit. There's still some things to talk about because if Jimmy doesn't retire, right? If that doesn't happen, um, you know, there's, there's, then the question becomes: Well, is 2021 his last year? And then who's in line to replace him a year down the road? Right. How does that change the list? Because a year later, where do some of the the drivers go? If if they aren't going to replace Jimmy in the 48, you got Brad Keselowski, you got all these things. We still got a lot to talk about here in Chuan, even though we're kind of on hiatus racetrack wise, which is good. But that's what we need is stuff to talk about. Uh, So, as Tom mentioned, it's not going to be a month long deal like it normally is. Uh, The on track action will begin with practice sessions on Wednesday and Thursday. That's the twelfth and thirteenth, followed by Fast Friday on the fourteenth, Indy five hundred qualifications on Saturday and Sunday, the fifteenth and sixteenth, and then each day of qualifications will be televised on NBC, providing more network coverage of qualifications more. Uh, then 2019 full broadcast schedule will be released soon. Um, the following week will begin with uh, hot pit stop practice sessions on Thursday, the 20th, the Indy Lights practice and qualifying. The Indy Lights race um, and pit stop challenge will be on Friday, the 21st, um, followed by carb day and the driver's meeting and the autograph sessions on Saturday and, then of course, the race on Sunday. So it's about a week. It's almost like NASCAR speed weeks, basically. Yeah. It's just like a week leading up to the race and then, of course, the race itself. But, um, you know, you were talking about Jimmy and, you know, the potential of him maybe retiring, maybe not retiring, maybe running the Indy race. I feel like when we get to that point in August, it, it's going to depend on where he's at in terms of NASCAR. If he's in, if he's solidly in the playoffs, I can see him taking the chance, running the Indy race, why not? But if you're not, you you think you would want to focus on still making it into the playoffs as opposed to, you know, and that's even if the playoffs even happen this year, but that's a whole other story we'll get to in a minute. Well, but. see, that's a, there again, that's a whole other thing. We don't know what this is going to be. when It's like juggling with swords right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, because, again, we keep getting, you know, we thought that April 30th was a little extreme when our governor, mm-hmm. and then, you know, the governor in Virginia said, hold my beverage and, right. you know, watch this, y'all, yeah, and went June exactly. 10th. So if if we were to sort of buy into his line of thinking that, you know, we're not doing anything till almost mid June. I mean, you, you're, you're not going to fit a full season into a half season. No, there's just no way logistically. I don't believe that anybody NASCAR, or anybody else that's national pulls that off. So um, then what do you do for the playoffs? How do you adjust? What do you, so if, but, it, but back to the IndyCar deal, if I'm Jimmy Johnson and I'm thinking maybe this is my last year and I want to go run some IndyCar races next year, I think I take the opportunity. Yep. It's there and it's easy. You're it's the best opportunity there. you're going to have to right. run both series at the same time on the same track without having to fly back and forth. So, Well, but but more importantly, he wants to run some IndyCar road course races. Mm-hmm. He doesn't care about the olds. Right, exactly. Now, for Tony Stewart, it's a little different because Tony Stewart's kind of reacting to – um you know, basically to uh, Doug Bowles's tweet that he thought there was one man in America who could run all four of, you know, the, the major races at, mm-hmm. at Indy and including the 500. And that's Tony Stewart. And Tony's response was, well, get me the top rides and I'll do it. Right. So Tony basically threw out the, the, the gauntlet, basically <laughs> right, the challenge, Here, the, the challenge. So, um, the, <laughs> You know, I don't know that that's going to all work out, but I would love to see Tony in an Indy car at least on the weekend of, you know, Grand Prix slash uh, Xfinity slash Brickyard. Again, road course races, a little different than the oval stuff at this point and probably doable. So, uh, you know, who knows? We we have to look for these little gems in this situation because otherwise we just all go crazy right and we have nothing <laughs> to talk about if we don't c- create controversy and conspiracy somewhere so as a result of the schedule changes at ims the indycar races scheduled for august 16th and 22nd have been rescheduled the mid-ohio race is now scheduled for august 9th which is the week before 
And the race at Worldwide Technology Raceway Gateway is now scheduled for August 30th. So they basically just split them so that they could put Indy in the middle. So, Which I love. Right. And then so now the talk is that the original, the first race of the season at St. Pete was going to be the beginning of the season. And now they're talking about that may be the finale of the season. And they just move it to St. Petersburg at the end of the season right. instead of, was it, was it uh, Sonoma, Laguna Seca, somewhere that they were going to run the last um, race? Usually it's um, Laguna Seca. Laguna Seca, but... yeah. So they would just rove to the uh, to the oh, other exactly. coast and run St. Pete uh, yeah. as a finale instead. So who knows? We'll, we'll see. That'd, it'd, be, it'd be good to kind of see what uh, what happens there. So, um, But we were talking about you know the schedule and, and the conspiracy theories. One of the, one of the things that I heard yesterday, um, a lot of fans and a lot of, of NASCAR people talking about was they would like to see NASCAR just kind of do away with the chase this year and just kind of run the season straight up from wherever we, whenever we get back going again, just run straight through the season without having to do the playoffs because that would actually open up the door to be able to run these double headers at Dover and Texas and places that we've we've had to skip races on without having to figure out how to run one race in the playoffs and one race without being in the playoffs and logistically, I just don't think it works. I think it's a, a decent idea at the very least, or at least maybe you know, run the season until you get to a point where you're back on schedule and then start a playoff maybe, you know, with eight drivers or, you know, maybe a championship four or whatever the case may be, you know, the the final race at Phoenix or something like that. Something to to where we can fit more races into the season without having to be logistically, you know, pulling See, our brain heard anybody talking about it was, it was a little bit of chatter it wasn't from any refutable people like in the sport but i'll I, be I, honest I've heard, you know i mean i'm the biggest people. proponent of the playoff probably in this room mm-hmm. um i but in this situation it might be easier oh. i mean because if you're going to go to dover wouldn't it make sense that it would be you just do a saturday sunday deal mm-hmm. rather than trying to i mean nick you're involved with the team with Venture Indy Motorsports, I understand it's ARCA, but it you can obviously envision... They've lost races, too, on their schedule. Well, so. it, yeah. For now, yeah. I yeah. mean, wouldn't it make sense that that could work for this year just to... The double headers would allow you to get more of the races in. I think it's going to get harder and harder to do these midweek shows and try and squeeze everything in in that short amount of time. I think while the midweek shows are probably, you know, boost ratings to certain clientele, I think for a team aspect... The double header is probably the easiest aspect for us, right? You know, being the team because we're there. It's less travel. It's less back and forth, and you know, depending on how they do the midweek show versus you know a double header, you know, we got to cross the country with you know semis, and semis have hour logs and all this stuff. And there's a lot of things that come into play, and you know, then we have to get our guys from X to to Z, and um, so I think a double header like a Pocono, if we could do a few more of those, it probably would be easier on the team. Still going to be chaotic and, and tough and um, take a lot out of everybody, but it would in the long run, I think that would work out better. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll talk more about this when we come back from break. There's, there's interesting aspects to the, the schedule, looking at the schedule as a whole and, and things like that that we can talk about too. We'll talk about more of that when we come back on the Inside Pass on WSIC. We'll be right back. This is News Talk, 105.9 Lake Norman, 100.7 Greater Statesville, WSIC, where Kannapolis turns first for breaking news and severe weather alerts. Did you know that Vesuvius Italian Restaurant and Pizzeria caters? That's right. Give them a call today at 704-924-7464, 704-924-7464, and let them make planning your next event or family gathering effortlessly. They're right at the Lowe Shopping Center, 118 Ventura Lane, Statesville. You won't find a better Italian restaurant anywhere. That's Vesuvio's Italian Restaurant and Pizzeria, 118 Ventura Lane, Statesville. For WSIC, I'm Fox 46 meteorologist Nick Coaster. Staying cloudy this evening with a chance for showers, and we'll see a cool overnight low of 37 tomorrow. Up to 60 with partly sunny skies and a touch milder for Thursday, a high of 62 under mostly sunny skies. From the Neighborhood Stormwatch Forecast Center, I'm meteorologist Nick Coaster. Be sure to catch Chief Meteorologist Tara Lane today on Fox 46 News at 5. This is Margaret Beveridge with your latest news. A New York man refused to let his 21-year-old son back into his home after the college student went on a spring break trip to Texas. According to the New York Post, 51-year-old Peter Levine tried to get his son, Matt, to end his vacation early. Today, Congressman Patrick McHenry, the top Republican on the House Financial Services Committee, sent a letter urging Treasury Secretary Stephen Munchen 
and Securities and Exchange Commission Chairman Jay Clayton to ensure emergency relief and economic recovery benefits to all American workers, including gig workers. The North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services has turned down a certificate of need from Atrium Health Lake Norman to build a 30-bed acute care hospital in North Mecklenburg. The $147 million facility, which was planned for the old Augusta Lee property in Cornelius, would have included two operating rooms. Stay tuned to WSIC throughout the day for more. I'm Margaret Beveridge from the WSIC News Desk. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm that guy with all the bumper stickers. I'd rather be driving a golf ball, but I'm going to buy American-made products with my fifth-grade honor student. And if you can read these stickers, you're driving too close. So when I break for a dog, <laughs> happens. So coexist with Allstate, where agents help keep you protected from mayhem. <laughs> like me. Call me, Allstate agent Kyle Houston today, 980-434-7000. From the WSIC News Desk, I'm Margaret Beveridge. You may have noticed we've expanded to one-minute newscasts, bringing you more stories more often. Thanks for trusting us to be your number one news source. Hello, race fans. This is Chris Wright. Thanks for listening to these guys. We want some great radio hosts. You're listening to the Inside Pass. Welcome back to the Inside Pass here on WSIC. Chris Rice bringing us back from the commercial break. He will join us on April 14th, by the way, to uh, kind of tell us what's going on over at College Racing during the uh, coronavirus uh, quarantine shutdown. Uh, Tom Baker, Randy Miller, and uh, Nick Montra being uh, producer for us today and uh, kind of chiming in on uh, the aspects of, of working with a race team, uh, being a part of Venture Indy Motorsports and not being able to be at the shop. Um, Nick was busy uh, producing and trying to learn buttons and stuff while we were talking about this earlier, but because of the, the state shutdown, people can't go to the shop at all. So you guys aren't anywhere around the shop right now. What What is it like? Because I know a lot of teams probably have everything ready to go so that when they open back up, they can just go to the shop, get things loaded, and, and leave. But for other teams, they may be behind the eight ball right now because we don't know when we're going to get back going again. We, we thought Martinsville. Now Martinsville may turn into Charlotte, and then who knows after that. So um, give us some perspective on what it's like you know, not being able to be at the shop and what you guys were doing preparing, knowing that maybe this was going to be a possibility at some point down the road. So as soon as our race at Five Flags, the Arca Menards East race got canceled, mm-hmm. we kind of had an idea, you know, we're going to be down for a little while. Right. So we just immediately went into basically production mode, mm-hmm. started, you know, Planning out our schedule, what we were going to do, what cars we we're going to have ready. Uh, we fixed all of our Daytona cars that need to be fixed in preparation for Talladega, like it was still going to happen, um, and started working on our intermediate cars, even though those weren't until May, and then started working on our road course cars. And then as this kind of evolved, we saw, hey, we're going to have some more time, but we anticipated being shut down at right. some point in time. We right. anticipated either from the county level or the state level or the Fed level. So we always had that in the back of our mind. So mm-hmm. we were kind of working as fast as we could. To get ourselves into that spot, right? So we'll have you know three, four, five cars, races ready to go, and um, and we were in a unique spot actually because we're in Cabarrus County here in North Carolina, and that shut down before the state. So we had a couple days before the state actually shut down where we were done. Right. So Thursday of last week at five o'clock, everybody left, and that mm-hmm. was it. Um, and then obviously the order came in for for Monday yesterday to to shut the whole state down, but. A lot of the smaller teams like us actually kept working, you know, kind of made it a, a voluntary thing. But a lot of the bigger teams, the cup teams, they've actually been off for a couple of weeks. Right. Um, there's been some truck teams like Nice and GMS that have been off as well. So they're actually going to be behind the eight ball whenever mm-hmm. this comes back. You know, I've heard of some cup teams that their Martinsville cars were just bare chassis because right. they hadn't worked. So right. if that were to happen, you know, they're going to have a real struggle for a week there to try to, to get to mm-hmm. Martinsville. So um, I feel like we're in a good spot, not not the best spot, but um Better than most. Right, right. So looking at the schedule, because I pulled the schedule during commercial break because I was kind of interested to see where where we would be going uh, from here. So obviously, um, as of right now, Martinsville is happening. We all think, obviously, that's probably not going to happen. Um, unless the governor gets paid off. So um, the All-Star Race and uh, Charlotte are the next two schedule, next two races on the schedule. That's uh, May 16th and May 24th. Conceivably, those could happen if the mandated quarantine date for North Carolina doesn't change past April 30th. Um, so as of right now, it would be the All-Star Race coming back, which, I mean, again, just much like Martinsville, I would be okay with an All-Star Race beginning of the season, although is it necessary knowing that we need to get races that pay points in at this point? You know, should we take Mar- no, the All-Star Race out and put one of the races in, like, Atlanta that we need to run to make up the, well, the a, time frame? <clears throat> that's an interesting thought. I don't really know what the answer is. Right. I think... Certainly, 
Nick had a great idea a couple of weeks ago after some of this started to happen in saying, why wouldn't we take the Atlanta race, plug it in on the weekend of the all-star race where that is going to mm-hmm. go, move the all-star race to the middle of the week along with um, the uh, truck race, and then finish up on the weekend with the 600. Where, yeah. You know, Atlanta's four hours. It's an easy, mm-hmm. um, to me... Again, you're making you're making some pretty tasty lemonade right, out, exactly. out of the lemons if right. you you know do something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, and and uh, and you get one of your races back. Now, right. Homestead, you could tack on to the end of the season. That would obviously take Phoenix as being the last race out. But um, you know, so those two are probably pretty easy. Some of these other ones were missing. Um, you know, I don't know quite how you handle that, but I just love the idea of double headers. Can you imagine two races in one weekend at Bristol? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, yeah. from from a fan's perspective, it'd be Absolutely. awesome. But from a you know somebody who works in the shop perspective, you'd be like, oh well, you know, they could do the same thing with Martinsville. I mean, That's very true. In, they're very, they're very well could. Oh, uh, that would be fun too. So after Charlotte, it's Kansas, Michigan, and Sonoma. Michigan has two dates, but the other date is later in the summer. Um, Sonoma is the only race on the West Coast before the playoffs, before you get to like Phoenix and, and uh, stuff like that in Las Vegas. Um, Pocono already has its doubleheader. Indianapolis is after Pocono, um, then Kentucky and New Hampshire. Then the supposed three-week break, which now won't have to happen because the Olympics have been postponed for another year. So they're not going to kick off until next summer. So now that three-week break that NBC asked for doesn't have to happen anymore. So there's potentially three weeks of straight racing right there, plus an off-week after that that they were going to have before they get into the, the fall area. So that's potentially a whole month worth of races that you can now run that you don't have to worry about anymore. Right. So that's four out of the eight races that you can potentially take care of right there. Um, and then after that, you get into um, the rest of the races leading up to the Chase. Michigan again, Watkins Glen, Dover, which lost a race already, so there would be a good doubleheader there. Uh, Daytona, Darlington, Richmond, and then into the playoffs after that. So, I mean... We can conceivably take care of half the races just with the break that we were supposed to have, and then I guess the other four races you could just have to plug in somewhere along the way. But I, I feel like if you don't want Homestead to be the season finale, if you want it to end in Phoenix, then that one of those four break, break races right there would be good to have Homestead in. That way you can yeah. leave the playoffs intact. Um, and then just, you know, I, you'd have to run. I would think you'd have to run the races that have two dates because you don't want to mess up the playoffs if you plan on doing the playoffs. So Texas and, you know, those races would have to be ran during that four-week stretch. But I think it would be easy to, to plug Atlanta in somewhere because Atlanta's pl- close proximity. So you could run a Darlington, a Bristol, a, you know, Richmond, or any of those races somewhere in the vicinity of and still be okay. But the other races may be a little bit more tough, but I mean, you're looking at four races right there that you can potentially run. So, yeah, it's a uh, it, it's a very interesting. I think you know we all want to. Obviously, this is a very tough time for all of us, right? Mm-hmm. And, and and it's we're all feeling a little claustrophobic. We're all you know kind of going nuts because we can't get a racing fix. But um, I think there could be some interesting experiments that could come out of this. And maybe out of all of that comes some new ideas to go forward with. And if that's the case, then you know what? You've made, again, it's lemonade out of lemons. But, um, you know, I think NASCAR needs to really think out of the box at this point. And I just, gosh, I just don't think it's viable to have these teams running two nights a week across the country. Um, for four or five, six weeks out of the, the shortened season. I, I, I'm not on a team, but I understand enough about the logistics to know that, you know, most of the teams don't have staff to be crisscrossing. Right. Well, and then from a safety point too, I mean, you know, Nick was talking about, you know, the truck drivers, the truck drivers can't just run, you know, coast to coast to coast 24 hours a day. I mean, they have log books they have to keep up with and, you know, state regulations and stuff like that. So they can't just be running, you know, West coast to East coast every single week either. Um, some teams only have one driver. I know some teams have two because, you know, team drivers, so they don't have to stop very often. But some teams only have one driver. So that driver can only run for, was it, 10, 11 hours a right. day or whatever it is. 10 hours. 10 hours a day, yeah. Uh, is it 10? My dad used to be a truck driver, so I was kind of remembering. But, okay. Um, but so they can only run for 10, 10 hours at a time, 10 hours in a 24-hour period. So, yeah. I mean, now you're looking, okay, it's going to, they'd have to leave earlier. You know, now you're putting wear and tear on those guys. And then, you know, you mentioned all the crew guys, too. Most of these teams, have, you know, that crew works on that car. So right. if that car gets in a wreck at Dover, 
uh, you know, on day one, and they need, you know, a, a backup car, or, you know, they wreck the backup car, and need another car, and now you've got to send teams back to, to let Charlotte to get another car to take backup. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that, that go into this. I, I hope that NASCAR, you know, obviously takes the time to go, okay, where is this logistically possible to where this is actually going to make sense for yeah. us? Because we don't want to, you know, as much as we want to get all these races in, we can't make it to where it's impossible for the crew guys and the, the team guys to get things you know, organized race by race. Too, well, it so. sounds like NASCAR has been kind of polling the teams as they go. Yeah. Um, because we had Andy Sice, who's a driver and, and team manager for our motorsports right. and the Xfinity series on league lap last night. And Andy said they, they'd received, you know, a couple of calls already mm-hmm. about, well, if we do this, would you be able to, to handle that with, you know, that right. kind of thing. So I think NASCAR is con- trying to sort of get the consensus. But when you look at some of the shows we've missed, for example, um, Atlanta's four hours. That could be a midweek show if it needed to be, mm-hmm. probably, you know, in some sort of way. Um, Homestead might be, that's probably about 12, maybe. It's a solid 13, 14 hours. Okay, so that one, the Dover's not a midweek show. No, you're not. That's 16 hours if it's a minute. So you're not going to Dover in the middle of the week. You're just not doing that. So unless you're going to run Loudon or like if you're going to run a race that's already in that area, then you can probably go up there and run a race. Yeah, you'd have to stay. You'd have to do it right without coming back. Walkins Glen or that creates another logistical. So I, I just it's going to get interesting. Let's put it like that. I think there are some shows like a Martinsville or Bristol that are very doable in a midweek format because they're two three hours away that you could probably do. You know, just again to have some difference and mm-hmm. test out whether a midweek show would, yeah, would for sure. You know, would work well. For sure. Um, but it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. And the other whole side to this we haven't discussed is from the local racer aspect. You're going to have a lot of these local Saturday night short track racers that are out of work for a while, mm-hmm. and their racing budget may be impacted by that. So. Right. You know, when, we, when we go back racing, there may be some, some drivers that won't be able to race every Car week this season be down because of the dirt tracks yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, but I think true. from a fan's point of view, boy, when, 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 when the tracks finally opened up, you will see some of the biggest crowds at these local tracks oh, yeah. that you've seen in years because everybody has all this pent-up mm-hmm. energy to, to go to the track and watch racing. I think everybody will come out. I think the that crowds are going to be great. Yeah. Um, the the car counts I worry about a little bit. Right. So obviously because of you know the 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 delay in getting the twenty twenty season back underway that also will delay the scheduling for twenty twenty one coming out, which is sad for a lot of people who who want to really see what NASCAR is going to do with the schedule, and then also the the next gen car. Um, we I don't know if the announcement has been made official yet, but they're going to delay the car until sometime in twenty twenty one. It's not going to be Daytona like it was supposed to be. Probably sometime in mid spring. Or summer, uh, Toyota wants them to delay it till 2022, but I don't. Think I it's gonna see. Happen. I agree. So I, I, I honestly think it should happen too. I think they should just wait another year. You know, give it some more test time. And, right. You know, some, I don't like the that, idea you know. of don't come out of here with just a brand new car without. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because they did it with the car tomorrow, and look what happened to that. So. Run it at the All Star Race. Yeah, there's your opportunity, yeah. and you know that's what I would do. I would use the All Star Race as the first on track with it. And um, then I would debut it in 22 because uh, can you imagine changing the whole, you know, it would change literally the entire season at midseason. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for, you know, new stories and kind of new things, but I'm not sure that's fair to the teams either. Right. You know, what, run the other cars another year and then go to 22 with a new one. Well, and it makes sense, too, because you don't want teams trying to focus on a car for next year when they can't even get the cars this year back going again. I mean, like Nick was saying, a lot of these teams are behind the eight ball anyway. So when the O shops up and back up, they're going to be, you know, several weeks behind getting cars for the next race, much less having to worry about a next gen car coming into the fray and, you know, them having to work on that car, too. So it's probably an idea for the best. That's for sure. Um, So we um, are are getting off here for uh, this week. Uh, We want to thank everyone for watching. Hopefully you guys are all staying safe. We we all really hate this quarantine thing, but, you know, got to do what you got to do to stay safe. Hopefully, you know, we can get NASCAR back going again, you know, hopefully sometime in May. Even if it's not Martinsville, we can go to a different track. Who knows? I mean, maybe we can, you know, take Martinsville out and put it at the end somewhere and, 
keep going. We'll, we'll see what happens. But if you haven't caught the uh, pro the pro invitational, watch it. It's it's at least entertaining if nothing else. But um, so we'll see you guys uh, next week on the Inside Pass. So for Tom Baker and uh, Randy Miller and Nick Muncher, we'll see you guys Thursday for Madness next week on the Inside Pass. Have be safe, everyone. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. News Talk for Denver. This is 105.9 FM, 100.7 FM, and 1400 AM, WSIC Statesville. WSIC News Time is 12 o'clock. Chris Weigel along for the ride this afternoon. Let's get you up to speed. Live now to New York for Fox News, followed by your local forecasts.